Hi, this is Morgan Wilson with Proficient, and today we're going to showcase the Azure Bot service along with a demo that we've created. Bots help us provide an experience to users that is less like using a computer and more like interacting with the person on the other side. Simple, repetitive tasks such as handling reservations, gathering profile information, or responses to queries are all use cases that leverage the power of a bot. A bot interaction can take the form of a simple question and answer, or it can be a sophisticated conversation that can intelligently provide access to services. Bots as virtual assistants help us with every opportunity to better improve customer service. And if human intervention is needed, handoff is seamless for the technician and invisible to the user. Microsoft Azure's bot service offers the following. An extensive bot framework SDK, now in its fourth version for developing bots, greatly accelerating the development process. Bot framework tools covering end-to-end -end development and testing. Today, we're gonna to showcase one of those tools. The bot framework service, which is used to send and receive messages and events between bots and what are known as channels. And lastly, channels, which are integrated connectors to common messaging endpoints, such as Facebook Messenger, Skype, Microsoft Teams, Slack, and many more. The bot framework service was designed with intelligence in mind. Microsoft Azure's cognitive service offerings are a set of REST APIs that help expose the machine learning model to the outer world, infusing service technologies with intelligent algorithms that hear, speak, recognize, and interpret user input. Cognitive services are sometimes referred to as ML as a service or machine learning as a service. All of the cognitive services reside in Microsoft's public cloud, guaranteeing a secure, highly available, and performant service. We need only consume REST APIs in applications in order to leverage the machine learning capabilities. There are three common use cases that chatbots can easily provide better service for. One example is in commerce. Together, the Azure Bot Service and Language Understanding Service enable developers to create conversational interfaces for various scenarios like banking, travel, and entertainment. For example, a hotel's concierge can use a bot to enhance traditional email and phone call interactions by validating a customer via Azure Active Directory and using cognitive services to better contextually process customer requests using text and voice. The speech recognition service can be added to support voice commands. Another example is in chatbot for enterprise productivity. The Azure Bot service can be easily combined with language understanding to build powerful enterprise productivity bots, allowing organizations to streamline common work activities by integrating external systems, such as Office 365 Calendar and customer cases stored in Dynamics CRM. Lastly, we come upon the informational chatbot. An informational chatbot can answer questions defined in a knowledge set or FAQ using Cognitive Service Q&A Maker and answer more open-ended questions using Azure Search. So what have we built today? We've built the Chicago 311 bot as a service for governments that leverage cognitive services, including a question answer knowledge base and a natural language processing system. We've built this sample bot using the city of Chicago as an example to provide for a better citizen experience. What we can see now is Visual Studio uh, running the current bot locally. We are testing with the Azure Bot Framework Emulator. Here, we can interact with the bot, inspect the activities that the bot service provides, as well as get a log of the history of what has occurred. I'm going to restart the conversations so that we can get to testing anew. When we reply to the bot, we have two, we have multiple traces. Not only are we able to see the bot's responses, we're able to see the JSON with it with each message that is taken from the Azure Bot service. In addition, when using cognitive services such as Lewis or Q&A Maker, we're able to see the the information behind the scenes as well as the top scoring intent. What exactly are those? Let's see. So here is Microsoft's Lewis Cognitive Service. Lewis stands for Language Understanding Intelligence Service. 
So this is the home page of Lewis, and you can see here I have two apps. Currently, we're using dispatch model in the current in the bot. If we open up the app, we can see we've aligned certain utterances with intents. Let's open up the chit chat, for example. The utterance is the response that the Azure bot service receives. So think of it as what the user says. And the labeled intent is the is the label that we want to teach the language understanding service to recognize the user input as. As you can see, we have many, many examples of user input that are labeled as chit chat. Let's go back to the intents. Why don't we check out the help intent? As you can see, the phrases help and I need help align to the help intent. Lastly, we, we have the Q&A intent. These phrases are aligned to the Q&A intent, which call eventually call the Q&A data, the Q&A knowledge base, which is our FAQ for the bot. As you can see, some relate to the city and some relate to an example. Let's test out the Lewis uh, intent scorer. So if we type in the message help, we can see that in the inspector, we have the, the, the Lewis app called dispatch model, as well as its top scoring intent, help. So this is, this is, this is good because we can see that the bot co correctly understands user input and can guide them towards a particular dialogue or it can call upon help as needed. Let's take a look at Q&A Maker. Q&A Maker provides for an interactive knowledge base. Since our example involves Chicago, the city of Chicago's 311 services or non-emergency services, you can see here that we have various question and answer pairs that associate with common city services such as when should I call 311 versus 911? And here we can see the answer. Let us try asking the bot a question regarding this FAQ. When should I call 311 versus 911? As you can see, the bot correctly responds. You can call 311 and et cetera, et cetera. It replies with, is there anything else I can help you with? What if the knowledge base needs to change? It's understood that knowledge bases are living documents that need to be constantly updated or changed. So why don't we try adding a Q&A pair? Who is your maker? That will be the question, and the answer will be Morgan, Sean, and Steve. So what we need to do now, since we've edited this knowledge base, as you can see in the top, we need to save and train it. And while we wait for it to save and train, <clears throat> this, is, this is utilizing the Azure Search API. Once we're done training it, we can publish it. Great, it's been published. Let's go back to the tester and let's restart the conversation and ask it that updated question. Who is your maker? As you can see, the bot replies with an updated answer that quickly. Now that we've figured out the knowledge base aspect of this demo, what if we want to create more intents or somehow improve the language understanding ability of our bot? Luckily, Lewis has an intuitive UI that can help us improve the app performance right here. We can review endpoint utterances or responses that the users have said or interactions with the bot. 
As you can see, we have various utterances on the left, and they're currently in line, aligned in tenths. If some are incorrect, then we can change them. So the utter, what if a user utters nice? That is correctly under chit chat. So since it was its highest scoring, that's that's fine. We align it to such. And then we click this little check mark, which allows us to add it to the aligned intent. Bring a bike on the CTA and the train. That both seems like those both of those utterances seem like they refer to the QA knowledge base. So we're also going to add them to the aligned intent. We can also load more utterances. In this case, there's nothing more that we need to load. Once we've fixed or realigned some of the utterances to their correct intents, similar to the QA maker knowledge base, we have to retrain and publish the Lewis app. So we click train, and after it trains, we publish it. It's truly that simple to refine the language understanding and knowledge base aspects of a bot. Let's talk about the process of developing bots. The process of developing bots is greatly facilitated with the existing suite of tools Microsoft provides out of the box. The first in the, in the steps of building a bot is planning. You must ensure that you have a thorough understanding of the goals, processes, and user needs. This is critical to the success of the bot. After planning our bot, we want to build it. The bot is a web service that implements a conversational interface. Determine what additional components your bot requires by pinpointing how you can extend the functionality of the bot. You could add natural language processing, question answer responses, the management of multiple conversation models, or even enhance the user experience featuring graphics, menus, and cards. After building the bot, you need to test it. Since bots are complex apps containing many moving parts working together, this can lead to some interesting bugs or unexpected behavior. Prior to publishing a bot, test it thoroughly with the tools such as the bot framework emulator shown before or test it on the web. After testing it, you're ready to publish it. When the bot is ready for wide availability, publish it to an address on the public internet. This is the first step of your bot coming to life. After publishing it, you can now connect it to multiple channels. When you connect your bot to channels, you enable a unified normalized stream of messaging regardless of where the conversation takes place. Lastly, evaluate the bot's performance. Use data collected in the Azure portal to identify future opportunities of improvement to performance and capabilities. That's all. Thank you for watching this demo. Have a great day.